to say that I've been eight years chronic. Um, well, I've, I've set up a project called uh, Nobism. Nobism is, uh, Nobis, uh, is uh, Latin for us and M stands for medical. Um, I set up this project uh, to try and see if we can do our own patient-driven research and support other research. Uh, I know as patients uh, we can develop new, uh, we cannot develop new treatments, but with the data we collect as patients, we can uh, find out the effective uh, the efficiency of our uh, effectiveness of our treatment we use, meaning we can basically. Uh, uh, see what treatments are best at this moment. Yeah. So I've built an uh, app on my own, uh, just because uh, uh, looking uh, online and uh, in the world uh, for headache application, I couldn't find anything that was uh, well good for me to use. Um, so I built an app based on symptoms and treatment. No, it's not even based on, on cluster headaches, it's symptoms and treatment. And knowing that we do more treatments uh, than only in medicine, I've added also the option to uh, keep track of your vitamin, uh, your therapy, your food or drink triggers, uh, alternative things, sport, uh, whatever you would like. Um, yeah, so the app is built so everybody can get their own buttons, their own setup in the app to collect the data they need to get inside in their own disease progression. So in our only in our in our group, uh, we uh, what we basically do we collect data, we analyze data, and we try to work together to get as group the movement we want to have. Okay. Um, in our group, we have uh, 24 people that share data. Uh, it seems a little bit, but uh, these people share data with another patient at the other side of the world by email. Uh, we've collected around 19,000 data points at this moment, and these are three uh, examples of our timelines uh, we have. Um, what, what we see here, basically, this is my personal timeline, and these are two others. What you basically see here is from 1 November 2017 to uh, 1 March 2019, all my attacks listed on day and on hour of the day. So you get, as a patient, you get a pretty good insight in the, in, the, in the attack pattern you have as a patient. You also see the intensity and the color of the points. Uh, I didn't manage to fill in the duration of the attacks, just because of my, I'm sorry, my technical limitations. Uh, um, but you see, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I always say that I'm almost pain free and I still have this amount of attacks. Mm. Uh, but you see different people and yeah. This is the basically the person I'm, I'm working for in my in my project because the thinking about this is giving me goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Huh? The next one. So we collect data, but to be able to also uh, do research and support research with data, we need to have a form to store data, but we also need to have a way to share data. And we don't have it now because we store it only on the mobile phone and we share it by email. But this summer I, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, met a, an American organization called uh, Open Humans. Can you remember? Yeah. Open Humans uh, is a non-profit data storage platform. Yeah. And they gave me a grant to connect my application to their storage. And the nice thing about Open Humans is that they can also uh, create projects where research or other interested uh, can get the data from the patients. So that means we collect data, it's going to get stored completely out of my project, out of my hands, in the hands of every individual patient, and everybody can set up a project and ask the patient to share the data with them. Hmm. Yeah? Next one. To, um, start our own research, because we want to build up our own knowledge as well as patient, uh, I found Ubicum. Ubicum is a Spanish, Dutch, German 
data academy, uh, which are who are specialized in uh, big data analysis and artificial intelligence, and uh, they have no medical background at all, but they're masters in visualizing the data uh, we have, and they are good in finding trends and patterns with uh, in the data we, we share. So they're going to set up a first project on open humans for us and ask us to share the data with them. Yeah. They will create our own personal reports and see if we can, if they can create a report of all the data together, shared, and they're going to store it back on Open Humans again in our personal accounts so we can share it again with any other organization that is interested in getting more insight in us as patients. Uh, it's a big picture. Yeah. Uh, but what we can do uh, can be used by anybody in the room here. Uh, my day, my app is free to use. Uh, Open Humans is free to use. And Ubicum is very willing to support anybody uh, that wants to get insight out of the data that we collect ourselves. Uh, so as a patient leader, so like pa people that are uh, managing patient groups on Facebook or the organizations, uh, uh, you can stimulate your patient to collect data and to collect their own knowledge. Uh, as an advocate, you could use the outcome of everything we produce to advocate in the world to get the change we need, because it's based on our own knowledge and our own outcome. Um, in my point of view, patient associations or alliances like the European Migraine and Headache uh, uh, Associations, they are in between a little bit of patient leaders and patient advocates, so they could use it on the both sides. But also as a speci uh, specialist or researcher, you could set up a project on open, uh, open humans and require the data that we have. The data will be shared anonymously, of course. Uh, there is a right to be forgotten in the system, so you could use that as well. Uh, and on the other side, you can correspond with the patients that are anonymously to, for instance, ask them to keep track of their, I don't know, coffee use. What time do they go to bed or anything else? The nice thing about Open Humans as well is, is that they have other projects connected to their platform as data input. That means I'm currently wearing my Fitbit data. That means I collect every step I take and I share that in my own account and I can share that with research. But they also have uh, GPS data that can be collected, they have DNA data that can be collected and everything can be stored on open humans and from open humans <coughs> shared with any project. But <coughs> sharing will always be happening uh, once somebody makes a project every individual patient will be able to decide by themselves if they find it an interesting project to share with or not to share with. For research, I, th I think, like I was, I was thinking about a little bit about uh, your baseline. I don't know how you collect your baseline. I think you do it with a questionnaire. Yeah. Um, imagine you can use, but could you go back to the timelines? Uh, the second or third point? No. Yeah, this one. One time. Yeah. Like if you use patients that collect data already before they start you, your uh, research, you have a baseline registered. You know exactly where this patient comes from and how he's been in the past. So you also know if you have a natural change in his, in his or, or, or a cluster length or anything, you can, you can have some more knowledge about it than just asking a question. How many attacks did you have last year? How many clusters did you have last year? How was the intensity and everything? The nice thing about this is that if they collect data during the research and even after the research, you know where they come from, you know where they be, where they are, and you know where they go to after your research. So I've 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 heard a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, here uh, saying they want to work with the patient. I also that hope that you have the willingness to support us patients so we can collect our own data and share it with you. That's
story. <laughs> an obvious question, maybe, but GDPR? Eh? The general data protection? No problem. It's all arranged by the Open Humans platform in uh, America and in Europe. Yeah, it's different. It's different. We share everything. But it's all, uh, they, they, they store, collect, and share the data. Well, the patient does it, but they do all the arrangement of that part. Yeah, of course. To share it when it becomes on the app. Uh, they, no, no. They, they, if they use the app, they can agree to store their data on Open Humans or not store their data on Open Humans. And once they store the data on Open Humans, they get insight in the project listed on Open Humans about cluster headache. So they get the option to say, well, I'm going to share with that project, but I'm not going to share with that project. Project. How you to if you decide to bring to market on the issues you feel to take your man your headache? Can you share this with all participants, right? The same treatment. The same treatment or idea. I mean, can they will will they see in their system this new button? Oh no, not yet, but that's an option. Yeah, yeah. Like I started with the application with the 15 buttons of myself in the library, and uh, I just put a button on my app to say request a new one. And I have over 300 buttons of symptoms, medication, and other treatment listed in my application already. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you get more insight about the patient because you don't only ask about cluster headache. A lot of patients have various uh, a diagnosis, so they keep data about symptoms, about all those diagnoses, instead of only cluster headache. So it's taking away a little bit uh, the glasses and look with an open eye. It's, it's asking the patient to tell their story. Yeah. On your application, do you explain shortly Yeah, if, if you install the app. Yeah, we have, we have it, yeah. but um, I was thinking <coughs> Other members, maybe to join your project. Yeah, I, I made a manual which uh, I, I, I sent to people that have questions at this moment. Uh, I just rebuilt the whole website uh, to be uh, to be able to uh, to show it like uh, like that the uh, Google and the uh, Open Human System listed. And I'm working on the other stuff. But uh, this is a one-person project and uh, building an app, maintaining websites, doing the talking to all the groups and. and in every country is a lot of work. Because mm -hmm. we also have a, we call it calendar. Yeah. On our, um, sure. Yeah, but that's a lot of work too, I've, I've seen It's it. a lot of work, but none of it. Your work is more international. Yeah. Our work is more Belgian. Yeah. Kingdom. So yeah. what you do is very interesting for us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Did you do systematic research with the data you collected on your uh, within this app? Good question, yeah. Uh, no, not yet. Why not? Uh, my knowledge is limited. I can do a lot of things. Uh, I've been able to, uh, it's a shame that I don't have it on the disk there, but uh, I've been able to build the personal reports for everybody that share data with me every month. I did that with Tableau software, which is basically yeah. software used for businesses to analyze trends in their sales. So I used that to build the timelines and to, to show the differences, uh, the changes in intensity, duration, and frequency. Uh, but I've, I've, I've started working on uh, 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 trying to find all the data points connected with an abortive treatment to be able to say something about the abortive treatment. And that, that's what became already very difficult, and that's why I was so happy to be uh, to found, uh, found uh, the Ubicom uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very nice app. And did the patients who are willing to enter their information in that system, did you ask them to provide a consent? Uh, no, because they send it already to me by email. So they have to open the email button, they have to write down my email address and then say, I'll send it to that person. Yeah, but uh, I think what, what Patrick asked is the key question. As soon as you will start to do systematic research, but and then it's stored on, on Open Humans already. And that will be the next problem where the server and uh, mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. we, have so the, we try to do yeah, something like that, and yeah. that drives you crazy. It, so I think yeah. collecting and doing 
So Something. they have that already. That's a super done. start. But, uh, <coughs> as soon as this becomes systematic research, you will run into numerous problems. Be aware. I think you can no, no, understand forward. Yeah. But I can only a, take every yeah, step by step. step. Mm -hmm. yeah. So every time I found an obstacle, I try to go over, under, through it, around it. <laughs> Around yeah. 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 That's why you are a classical Heavy. 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 This thoroughly collected data, considering your migration, time of the night, and other habits, give more information yeah. of 25 patients than 10,000 average situation. Because yeah, I, think, I think so. Delicate details can controversially misinterpret some interesting yeah. nights. Well, if you ask the question. So this is a serious, very serious approach, 360 we can call it, if we can see the where you are in Stockholm, maybe you went by plane, did you sleep at night, yeah. you didn't, was it because of tea or gin tonic, together with some of yeah. or by logic, or maybe you didn't, and this is important. Yeah. And uh, this has a great um, scientific value, and we should do the best in our countries to support, to make it on what this platform on all the countries who yeah. participate, I hope. and in a few years it could be a really productive uh, uh, database, which yeah. can give insight to new treatment methods. I think pharmaceutical companies will be happy to incorporate <coughs> this knowledge to the development. Thank, oh, so. thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the